What's going on guys, Sam here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about some of the most common mistakes I see in modern visual effects. Now, this is a continuation of the last video I made on this topic, and if you haven't watched that one, I wanna point out that these aren't just mistakes I see beginners making. These are mistakes that I see all the way from beginner work up through Hollywood films. And the reason I'm addressing them is because some of these mistakes and techniques are actually being taught to students as they're learning. So if you learn VFX from YouTube or or certain online courses or even film school, listen up because you've probably been taught to use some of these techniques and they're dead giveaways that your shot is fake. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. The first kind of mistake that I'm gonna be covering in this video that I see all the time is adding camera shake. Now, adding camera shake is not inherently wrong. It can be a nice way to add a bit of life to your shot, but there's two problems with camera shake. One, it needs to be used in the right way at the right time and in the right context context. Adding camera shake to a CGI shot just to hide its imperfections and make it feel more natural is not a valid reason for doing so. Camera shake as a stylistic and cinematic tool should primarily be used to invoke a feeling of instability, uncertainty, intensity, or as a choice based upon the story, characters, or film genre. Of course there are exceptions to these guides, but it typically should be a choice made based upon the meaning of the shot, not just to hide imperfections or purely to add life to your shot. And secondly, if you're going to add camera shake to your shot, you should do it the right way. In most cases, the best, most organic way to add camera shake is by using a virtual camera to record real, handheld camera position data. The way camera shake is typically added, which is commonly taught, utilizes random noise patterns applied to the position and rotation values of your camera in 3D space. These noise patterns create camera shake that is passable, but the noise patterns are a dead giveaway that your scene is fake. If you really want your scene to feel handheld, I recommend capturing real position data from a handheld device. To record position data, you just need an iPhone or an iPad, the LiveLink app, and Unreal Engine, which of course is free. This allows you to record real position data from your iPad or iPhone directly into Unreal Engine and apply it to your virtual camera. The result is easy to capture handheld camera movement without the need for manual camera animation or the use of random noise patterns. This is always going to yield the most natural and lifelike camera movement results because you're actually operating the virtual camera yourself. The second mistake I see a lot of artists making is not adding enough detail to their shots. Detail is one of the key components that makes or breaks your shot. Every object in the world has a texture to it, imperfection, a level of roughness, and tiny grooves or bumps that pick up the light in different ways. These microscopic imperfections manifest themselves in what we see as texture. These are represented by textures or materials in the 3D world. On a larger level, there are noticeable deformations on things such as landscapes in the form of rocks, pebbles, logs, footprints, mounds, or holes in the ground. These are typically represented by geometry in the 3D world. The eye is capable of picking up an incredible level of detail in both the texture and geometry of a scene. And if your virtual scene does not match the level of detail that the audience's eyes are expecting in either the geometry or the texture or both, they're going to know that something is off. That's why it's so important that we always use the highest quality textures possible for cinematics to preserve texture quality while also keeping the scale of assets that we use set to their default value or smaller to preserve geometry quality. We do not want to be scaling up assets, especially photogrammetry assets such as the ones available through Quixel Megascans because they're captured to scale and therefore contain only the level of detail appropriate for the object to remain that size, not only in the texture, but also in the geometry. Fortunately, we have a lot of great tools for adding detail to our scenes. In Unreal Engine, we have the foliage tool, decals, and even a tool which uses physics to drop objects like rocks and sticks or any other object you want into the scene in order to achieve a more natural look to the object's placement and positioning. Small details like micro movements in the environment, like a light breeze blowing plants around, or a slight movement to the atmosphere in your scene go a very long way to breathing life into your shot and making it appear real to the eye. Wind can be added to your plants using the Quixel Megascans foliage material, and atmospherics can be added with animated VDB assets or fog cards to get some movement and variation in your scene. Now, if you want to learn how to use these tools and how to really take your visuals to the next level by applying these techniques and many others I don't really have time to talk about here, I highly recommend checking 
checking out our courses on BoundlessResource.com. We offer a 100% free Unreal Engine beginner course, which gets you started in Unreal even with no prior experience in 3D programs. And we also offer the Unreal Engine for Filmmakers course, which is suited for VFX artists and filmmakers. It'll take you from beginner to pro in just 10 days and teach you how to create Hollywood level cinematic visual effects, as well as the Next Gen Filmmaker course, which is suited for filmmakers and DPs and teaches you how to use Unreal Engine as a previs tool to plan the lighting and cinematography for your live action shoots with perfect precision. We have an amazing community with over 17,000 students and we would love for you to join as well. I'll link all of our products in the description below, so feel free to check them out. Now with that being said, let's move on to our last common mistake, which is using super shallow depth of field or excessively long lenses. These two aspects of a shot go hand in hand because depth of field is directly impacted by focal length. Depth of field is the range of distances from the lens which are in sharp focus. Shallow depth of field means there is a narrow range of distances that are in focus, while deep depth of field means there is a large range of distances that are in focus. Shallow depth of field can produce what is known as bokeh, which is what you see when there are out of focus lights in the background of a shot. This can be very pleasing to the eye, however I see a lot of VFX artists taking this effect to the extreme and using unrealistic or simply impractical levels of shallow depth of field. This is often done to hide imperfections in the CGI and also make it look pretty at the same time. But in most cases, you would never shoot a scene like this in real life, and so it's not good practice. Additionally, due to the fact that the bokeh is being generated digitally and is not impacted by physical imperfections in glass like it is in a real lens, the bokeh is often far too perfect and clean. This is a dead giveaway that your shot is CGI. Now, there are solutions for this, such as my good friend Joshua M. Kerr's Virtual Glass Lens Kit, which actually uses virtual versions of real lenses inside of Unreal Engine to replicate almost perfectly the look of shooting on a real lens. It's really a fantastic product, and I highly recommend taking a look at it, so I'll link that down in the description for you guys. But even using these tools, you still need to keep your lens settings and depth of field at a realistic level, which is where the next aspect of this mistake comes into play, the focal length. In cinema, depending on the size of the film or the sensor, most shots are captured between the focal lengths of about 24 to 50 millimeters, with many filmmakers enjoying the 35 millimeter focal length in particular due to its versatility in capturing the context of a frame while minimizing distortion and still allowing for shallow depth of field. If you find yourself using 200 millimeter focal lengths or 500 millimeter focal lengths for most of your shots, chances are you're not shooting your scenes in a realistic way. These extremely long focal lengths simply aren't practical or aren't desirable in most situations because they create extremely shallow depth of field and also require the filmmaker to be very far away from the subject to capture it with any sort of context. These lenses also collapse the depth of your shot by making objects that are farther away in the background appear larger. This can be very disorienting as a viewer because it makes it hard to get a sense of the scene's scale and the environment in which the scene is taking place. This is not in and of itself a dead giveaway that your shot is fake, but if every shot in your sequence or film is captured at a long focal length, chances are your audience is going to notice at least subconsciously and it will bother them. So as I mentioned in part one of this video, try to shoot your CGI scene the same way that you would a real scene, with realistic lensing and focal lengths as well as realistic levels of depth of field. If you can make that look good, you're going to find that your CGI shots are beginning to look like real life. So that concludes my list of the most common mistakes I see artists making and a few tips on how to fix them. As I said before, if you want to really take your skills to the next level and learn how you can implement all of these techniques and more in your own work, or if you want to get started on our free beginner course, check out the links below and head over to our website, balance-resource.com. If you guys found this video helpful, a like and subscribe go a really long way. Let us know what you think in the comments and also feel free to let us know if you have any suggestions for future videos, as well as any courses or plugins you'd like to see us make. We love serving this community and we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch these videos. So thank you guys for being here and we'll see you in the next video.